This is the second part of our tutorial that focuses on the chamfer tool. Now let's look at the chamfer command. We can click on the drop down next to fillet, and here it is. Fillet and chamfer are very similar to each other, as we can see in the command line, but chamfer uses different constraints. For example, we can specify two distances or a distance and an angle. Let's use distance first. When we click on distance, AutoCAD asks us to specify our first chamfer distance, and this applies to the first line that we select. So, for example, we can set a distance of 2 for this one, and so that we can see the differences between both distances, we're going to set a different distance of 7 for the second one. Now that our distances are set, the command has reset itself and we're ready to click on our lines. We could immediately click on our lines without doing this, but without a distance, it would have essentially made a straight 90 degree angle. So now we can click on our first line, and then we can click on our second line. And what AutoCAD does is it applies our distances accordingly. These distances can be measured if we were to take any linear measurement tool, for example, and we can measure from here to here, and then we can measure from there to there, for example. And we can see that our distance of 2 applied to the first line from here to where the lines would have met if we set our distances to zero, for example, then there would be no change. And our second distance of seven applied to the second line from here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the command, but we're going to click on our lines in the opposite order. So I'm going to press the undo key just a few times just to get rid of all of our linear dimensions and our chamfer. Let's use it again. And this time, all I'm going to do is click on this line and then on this line. Now, Looks like our distance got reset, so we'll select it one more time. We're going to input 2 and then 7. And now, if we click on our second line, we can see that the chamfer has essentially mirrored itself. So now our distance is 2 in this direction and 7 in this direction. Let's use chamfer again. And instead of distance, we're going to use angle. Now we can specify our length, so we can type in 5 units, for example. And we can specify our angle. If we were to specify a 45 degree angle, then the distance from either line will be the same. So it doesn't matter which one I click first. So I can click on this line and then that line, and now you can see a nice even corner from both sides, and it wouldn't matter what order I chose my lines in. Let's do it one more time, and this time we're going to change our angle. So we can keep our distance at 5 if we want to, and now let's use a 30 degree angle, and let's start from this line and then go to this line. And as you can see, our angle is being specified by this line, so the angle is 30 degrees from here to here, while the opposite scenario is occurring from the second area. So we can use an angular dimension to test this. Let's start here and go here. So here is 30 degrees, and if we start from here to here, this is the opposite, 60, to make a total of 90 degrees. And now, of course, just to test this, let's do this in the opposite order. So we're going to use chamfer again, it's already kept our previous setting, so we can just click on our lines. So we're going to start from our second line and then go to this line, and there it is. Now we've essentially mirrored the situation once again. Let's go back to chamfer, and this time we can go to trim, and we can switch between different kinds of trim modes, just like we did for fillet. So if I click on trim, I can choose whether to trim or not to trim when I make a chamfer. So right now it's set to trim by default, so we can click on no trim. And if we were to do a chamfer again, let's do it through distances this time, and we'll use different numbers just to prove and do some tests. So we're going to use the number 4, and then we'll use the number 9 for our second distance. And let's use this line here, and then go to this line here. And as you can see, it kept the original chamfer, but it created a brand new one. It didn't necessarily connect the lines, so the no trim option allows you to essentially make a new chamfer without connecting both lines necessarily. Let's look at chamfer again, and let's look at the last options in our command line. We have a new option called method, and all this allows us to do is to switch between using our distance or angle, and just like with fillet, we can actually click on our screen and allow these options to be wherever we click. So we could use this to switch between distance or angle, however, you could also just click on distance or angle in the command line, so this seems to be a bit redundant. We can also use the multiple command, just like with fillet, so you can use multiple chamfers without having to re-click on the command again. And of course, we can chamfer polylines, just like we could fillet polylines, and the undo key 
allows us to undo a command from within it, especially when you're using multiple, so that if you need to undo one chamfer without having to cancel the entire command, then you can use the undo command if you really needed to. This is the end of part two of our series. Part three will focus on the blend curves command.